So what happened was I was working in the film industry, in the art department, mm. and we worked on Star Wars, Empire Strikes Back, and then it was just a progression to move on to Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm. What was great though, we grew up with animals. My father's always had animals. We had a pet chimpanzee when we was a child called Primo that used to fucking run around the house going bonkers. And you know, it was great because when people used to come round for Sunday dinner, there'd be a chimpanzee sitting at the table. They used to shit themselves. I mean, literally thinking, what the fuck is that? And Primo was very bold and brave and would sit. Um, and my aunt would get a packet of sweets and pass them round. And Primo would look in the packet, take a sweet, get one end of the wrapper and the other end of the wrapper, pull it, and on cue, throw the sweet away and eat the wrapper. And, and so we've always had weird animals and cut to the chase. My father supplied a lot of the snakes on the movie. It was my pet monkey, Snuff, that was on the movie. And I had an amazing time. I mean, ironically, I was asked to, by Steven Spielberg, the stunt woman wouldn't go in the snake pit. And ironically asked me, uh, Steve, come here, and and I had my legs shaved and I wore the party dress, so it's me in the snake pit with the Well of Souls and Harrison Ford with the snakes coming to get us, which was great fun. Believe it or not, when you walk down the street and you see a blue plaque and you go, wow, Agatha Christie lived here or Chopin lived here. And I was thinking, wow, wouldn't it be lovely one day if you could afford to live in one of these houses with a blue plaque? It would be an amazing house to live in because it's always about stories. And remember, a brand is about a story and houses have stories. And I thought, wow, but of course, the value of a house with a blue plaque on is given that they put about £150,000 added to the house because it's got a blue plaque. So I thought, fuck that. I'm going to create my own plaque society. So instead of the blue plaque society, I created the red plaque society. Salvador Dali, 1904 to 1989, the legendary Catalan surreal painter, did not live here, plaque. He fucking didn't live in my fucking house, Salvador Dali. How amazing is that? He didn't live in my house, and guess what? It's, this devalues your house by 150,000. So it's fucking amazing. <laughs> and of course, you can have anybody you want with your red flag. So your favourite artist, your favourite hero. I, very fortunate, got my first job when I was 15. And we had all these animals, like chimpanzees and snakes and scorpions and spiders and all sorts of fishes. And I used to have birds of prey, but I always wanted a horse always wanted a horse and guess what in London there's a place called South Hall and on Wednesday afternoon the gypsies used to sell all their horses here in London and I got my first pay packet I didn't tell my mum and dad and I got myself over to South Hall and I bid for this horse I couldn't afford a saddle I'd never ridden before and the gypsy said can you ride and I said no he said come here boy and he took me out the back of Sainsbury's car park in South Hall he gave me a lesson and I rode the horse back, bareback, all the way back to here. And I knocked on the house of my parents, because we lived in a house, a council house, terrace, no side entrance to the garden. And as I knocked on the door, my mum came to the door, she went, oh, what have you got? I said, I bought a horse, you quick, get her in the garden, give her some water, didn't bollock me or nothing. We took the horse through the hallway, through the living room, through the kitchen and into the garden. And every day I'd ride my horse to work, literally bareback. I would get my horse, come out, back through the kitchen, back through the living room, back out into the hallway, and then gallop off to Old Kent Road and get into the studio and go into their car park where there'd be the Aston Martin, the Porsche, and I tie my horse up. And when I come out at the end of the day, there was the Aston Martin, the Porsche, my horse, big pile of horse shit, get the horse, the gardener would go, no, I'll have that, I'll take that back for the garden, please. Oh, okay, cool, thank you. And I go back home with my horse. Always excited with any project, funny enough. You know, when I get calls today, I'm passionate about what I do. I discovered glitter, magic, markers and plastic scissors when I was a kid and things have never changed. And to get a call like that was just amazing. But remember, 
who the fuck was George Lucas? I never heard of him. So it wasn't like, wow, it was okay, it's interesting, there's, a, there's, a, there's an opportunity here that maybe I'm going to work on something that will be very, very fascinating and interesting. <laughs> and of course, the fact that Star Wars became what it was, was truly uh, uh, a remarkable and being there at the right place at the right time. The first thing I look for is somebody who's enthusiastic and passionate. And actually you can see that, that, that they eat, drink and sleep doing what we do. And, and it's that thing that I'm always looking for passionate people. Secondly, obviously you've got to deliver. And as long as they show me work that is absolutely amazing, because obviously we're in the premiership and you have to win the premiership, and premiership's won by one point, right? It's not won by that. So I don't think the answer to life is that you've got to win all the time by that much, because it's not. So the one point thing for us is we always want to win the premiership. And I look at their work. Once I've looked at their work, then they want to show me qualifications. Ironically, they want to show me qualifications before I look at the work, but fuck the qualifications, because for me, the qualification is the work. And if the work is amazing, I don't give a fuck whether you fucking got a B, a D, a Z, or whatever it is, but at the end of the day, mate, it's about talks cheap and money buys houses. And I want people to come here, deliver stuff and produce design and create stuff that no one else has created before. And obviously, and, and obviously we're a great family here. We come a great family because we are passionate about what we do. But people love to be in front of enthusiastic people that are good at what they do. And that's the answer to being successful in whatever you do. Find that thing that you really, really love to do. And guess what? Do it and the money will come after. Don't try and go and chase money. A lot of people in life are miserable, fucked off, because they think that the answer is money, bollocks. Find the thing that you're so passionate about, regardless, and guess what? The more passionate you are, the better you become. The better you become, the harder you work. The harder you work, the money starts coming in. And that's how you do it.